Oh, boy, is it cold outside. I don't mind a downright chill, but that creeping kind of cold that goes clear to the bone, that's no good for a man my age. I saw the light from your window down there on the wall. I thought you'd be at work by now. Well, I was, but every time the seasons change around here, I catch it. <coughs> I catch a cold. It happened again this morning, right on cue. Sorry to hear that. Say, I, I got a bottle of rock and rye oh, in there. Oh, no I... thanks. I'm bunking over with the kids tonight. Give Rita a chance to play Florence Nightingale. Good, good. There's no remedy in the world like being coddled by somebody you really care for. <laughs> no, there isn't. Well, I'll, uh, I'll see you, I... Oh, no, wait a minute, Eddie. I want to talk to you about something. I wanted to the other day, but it seems like you were asleep. Well, uh, what's on your mind? Well, sir, uh, a couple of days ago, I poked my nose into your business. I couldn't help it. Oh, do you mind? No, go right ahead. Well, Norman came over to talk to me. He was very upset, mostly about you. Oh, oh well, I think we straightened out all our differences. I hope so. I told him he'd have to accept the facts. After all, you're Rita's father. Okay, you made a few mistakes, but she's entitled to get to know you. It was good of you to put it to him that way. And I think it might have helped. He has been a little hard-nosed. Well, you can hardly expect anything else, can you? No, I guess not. But it has been tough on Rita. Sure, sure it has. Now, tell me, did you take time to talk things out? Oh, absolutely. You see, the kids have sort of been confiding in me ever since they first got hitched. Yeah, I know. Rita's crazy about you. Yeah, well, with you here, she'll talk to you. But Norman and I, we've been friends for a long while. You see, he worked for me. And he'll come back to talk to me again. So I just wanted to make sure that we're thinking along the same line in the important issues, so to speak. Well, I appreciate your interest, Eli. And maybe in the next couple of days, we can uh, have a cup of coffee and jaw about it a little more. Sure, sure, any time. Oh, 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 say, did Mrs. Hewitt catch up with you? No. Well, Why? she's got a rug cleaning man coming here day after tomorrow. Now, the other folks, they'll all be at work. But you working at night, she was afraid it might interfere with your beauty sleep. Oh, no. After a night's work at eight, it's on my feet. It'd take more than a rug machine to wake me up. <laughs> more like a San Francisco earthquake. <laughs> well, I, I better get going. Sure, sure. you can appreciate simple things. Of course, you're wearing white. No. Why on earth not? I'm sure Mr. Payton wouldn't mind. After all, he let me get married in white, and I'd been married before. All right, Betty, that's enough. But then I hadn't been a professional adulteress. All right, get out. Not until you tell me the truth. The truth is the handwriting you saw on the wall the day I entered this house. Do you care to translate? You and I are much alike. We both noticed that the first day we met. As time went on, we became more alike. Shall I elaborate? Do. Our desires, our ambitions became identical. Shall I be specific? Do. We both wanted Stephen. And we both wanted to be Martin Payton's darling because of what his money could buy for us, to wear, to drive, in fact, to be. The only difference between us is that I'm just a little more experienced, a little bit wiser. And I handle my men a lot better. You wanted the truth? About Boston. What really happened in Boston? Boston. Let's see. You tell me. I did tell you. Ages ago. I don't believe you. You don't believe me. But you don't believe Stephen either. Is that it? You know you don't know him very well, do you? Haven't you discovered that he is painfully honest? 
depressingly moral. In fact, quite a well-rounded 19th century Puritan. I discovered that in Boston. Does that answer all of your questions? But he was with you. You both came out of the Boston house together. Childish, Betty. I took a calculated risk. Obviously, Stephen was going to tell you the truth. If I told you the opposite, I had a 50-50 chance of breaking up your marriage. Better than a 50-50 chance, only I didn't know it at the time. You were so very eager to believe the worst. But I saw... You saw two people coming out of one house. Shall I tell you what you didn't see? You didn't see a woman. A woman who should know better. Begging him again. Begging if she wanted him that much. And he let her play it all out till she was like a 14-year-old waiting for her first kiss. And then he said, no. No. I never thought I'd forgive him, never. But I did because of you. He told you he didn't want me, but you wouldn't believe him. You let him take Martin Payton into that court and make a complete fool of himself for you, all for you. And you still wouldn't believe a man who's been turned on that many times, that unjustly has to turn somewhere. No, I know he's mine. You're lying again. Not this time, he's mine. Your whole life has been a lie. He belongs to me. Stephen called you a professional liar, and he's right. Get out. Get out. the continuing story of Peyton Place. This is from the car. My toolbox, how'd you get it? What are you doing with my wrench? You know, it might not be a wise idea to let anyone think you weren't concerned. Concerned enough to explore every possible avenue to discover actually what happened. If we lose the baby, it'll wreck Rita's life. And I want this baby. Me. 